Matters. Good morning, Mind Your Matters family. It is 7 o'clock or so on Saturday morning. And I wanted to talk about a comment that I made in one of my videos. No, it's not bad. <laughs> it's actually words that I put up on the screen. And I had a positive comment by a cousin who said, thank you. When I have my kids get to this point, I'm going to keep that in mind. And I just thought that was a blessing. So I want to share the reasoning behind this comment that I put in the video of homeschool tips and tricks, writing fun for tots. And if you haven't watched that video, you can put that video in your queue for your next uh, YouTube watch time. But why don't you hang on here? Because I think this is going to be fun. If you would like to grab your Bible, we're going to be in Judges 6. Judges 6. Well, when I think about homeschooling, I think about all the lessons learned, <laughs> mistakes made, and all that. Not to discourage myself and to keep myself down, but to think about how far I've come and how thankful I am to the Lord that he has brought me to this place. The comment came out from the understanding that the greatest teacher, the one who has it all together and understands any type of learning way, any type of learning disability, all that. The, own, the person that knows all that is Jesus. He's the Lord, and he has made us, and he's given us a great examples in his word as being the master teacher. I do desire to be a master teacher. So I'm going to study who is Jesus. Jesus taught people from the known to the unknown. He used parables. He used stories. He used object lessons. He used all of these things in his teachings, and he reached the lost, and he reached souls. I want to reach my children for Jesus. I also want to reach them with an education, but that is not the most important thing. Their soul is. So as I talk through here, hopefully briefly, about why I made this comment in the Homeschool Tips and Tricks about looking towards the future of the training, the positive, positive steps, the positive little gains that you get when your child sits in their seat and does the work that they need to do. Look to the future. Look what what they are to become. Now, I am not omniscient. I am not God, obviously, but I can see the steps, and Jesus helps me as I need to train my children, and I know a little bit more than I did when I had my first child. I know that these are steps to success in training, training them to sit and do their work, or X, Y, Z, behavior, whatever, you can put it all in there. So I can see the successful steps. And to see that positive step, little by little, inch by inch, by the yard, it's hard, but by the inch, what a cinch to quote Patch the Pirate, if you know his songs. Anyway, so here in Judges 6, I just talked about how Jesus was the master teacher, but look here in God allowing an angel to come to the Bible character here, Gideon. We know Gideon was oppressed. This is the time, the seven years of oppression, when Midian was there, and the children of Israel, they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. We know how that goes. They did evil, they got punished, and so on. They cried out to God, they got delivered, and it was just this big circle. And you know what? It's the same thing in our lives. So we can look at this as an example. So Gideon, he was hiding his food. And I read this story a lot. This actually, uh, um, I sat with my son in one of the videos that we did with the homeschooling video. Let's see if I can find the book here. Okay. Yes, the first step Bible. I'll put a picture, hopefully on the screen, and some, you know, tabs beneath. But I taught my son about this, and he loves hearing about Gideon. I'm going to read you directly let me see if I can find the page. <laughs> oh, this is a bit impromptu. You're going to have to forgive me. Okay. On page 118 in the book, The First Step Bible, Golden Honey Bible for Toddlers, 
first page here on 118, the title is called A Mighty Soldier. And don't worry, I'm going to go back to the Bible, but I wanted to start here. Hello, my name is Gideon. God's people are living in new homes, but bad people are hurting us. Who will help us? And it shows him hiding. And he's got the wheat, and he's, you know, at the wine press, we know how, you know, the Bible words it, and we'll go back there in a second. But God's angel comes to me. We're on page 120. God's angel comes to me and says, you are a mighty soldier, Gideon. You can help God's people. God will make you strong. And I'll stop there. It goes further, and he calls the soldiers, you know, and so on and so forth. It's only like a four-page Bible story, but I always add to it. Here in the word of God, in Judges 6, verse 11, the angel appears to Gideon, and, and there came an angel of the Lord and sat unto the oak that was in Orpah that pertained to Joash and, oh my goodness, all these names. Ah, the, yeah, the son of so-and-so, but Gideon, that's who we're talking about. <laughs> he threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midians. And the angel of the Lord, verse 12, appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Valor. We know valor has a, a big word, a strong word, courage, courage under fire, strength, fortitude, all of these things. Now, was at this point Gideon showing these traits? No, absolutely to the contrary. He even goes further and as he's talking, he's like, why are you talking to me? I am like the least in my household. I am the least of the children of Israel. I am in the least of the tribe. We are like the bottom dwellers. Why in the world are you talking to me? What do you think I can do for God? Well, the angel, I don't know if he had this big old conference in heaven I don't know if they had a big PowerPoint presentation, a multimedia event, and all the angels come in and sit down, and God unveils the life of Gideon. I have no idea how it went down, but that angel was sent with the knowledge that Gideon was going to be mighty. Let's look here further in verse 13 of Judges 6. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which thy fathers told us, saying, Did did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. He's saying, what is going on? We are not uh, living the life that we need to live. And yes, I remember God, you delivered our people from Egypt and so on and so forth. What's going on now? But the Lord looked upon him, verse 14, and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Wow. Have <laughs> not I sent thee? I know. God sent that angel to say, I know the future. I know these steps that are going to be taken. I know your future end, and it's going to be great. You are going to be a mighty man of valor, but here's what we need to do. Obey me, and let's grow, and let's go. And he said unto them, O my Lord, where with shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor, and yada, yada, yada. He goes for a couple verses talking about the reasons why. This sounds familiar. Do you remember Moses? I can't speak, I can't do this, and so on and so forth. Yeah, we all give excuses to why we can't. Maybe you give excuses as a homeschool mom to why your child can't sit in their seat. I know, I know there's physical things and, and other, other health issues. I'm not talking on that. You, you know, I don't, want, I don't want you guys to think that, but eh, work with them with love and kindness and bring them along. And that's what God did here with Gideon. And you know what? He became a mighty man of valor. It's verse 17. Oh, let's do 16. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee. I love that. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest to me. And he asked for a sign. Um, There were some cakes. Um, The angel of the Lord sat and, and all of those things. But next steps here, Gideon obeys and goes with God. We see all the categories here in our Bible. Gideon builds an altar. Now these are important, but not really to topic of what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to go through them. Gideon's death is demanded. 
Gideon gathers an army. The spirit of the Lord, verse 34, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet. And the army, the, the group was gathered about him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh to gather them. Wow. But you know what? Gideon still looked to God and looked for some proof that God was with him. God was with him. And that's where you're going to be, Mama. You're going to be now not God or anything like that, but you're going to be proving and helping that child. Um, even in that video, my son was in a little obstinate mood. He said, Mom, I can't. Say, you can. Just say that. Don't be like, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Say, you can. Maybe not now. Not yet, but you will. And to close up here, last thing. Gideon's army is too large here in verse 7. I'm sure you remember this story. So (laughs) God lets the army be selected in different ways. You know, they go down. Do they lap the water? Do they lap it up like a dog? Do they bow down on their knees to drink, keep their, you know, sword by them and bring the water from their hand cupped up into their mouth? So these are things that God does. God does and selects things that need to be done so that Gideon can be successful. When I think about homeschooling, sometimes (laughs) things are too large. Sometimes things are too much. God is going to select things tailored for your child. He's going to use you. He's going to use you who's educating them. He's going to (laughs) let you know this is not okay. Take this out. Put this in. You can do it. When I think about God selecting that army, I think of an army that is going to be training up my child. It's not going to be just you. You're not going to teach your child everything there is to know. There's going to be influences. There's going to be, if you go to church, you're going to have church um, Bible school teachers. You're going to have video teachers. You're going to have Nana and Papa on FaceTime to talk and to share. And there's going to be ways to train your children that um, God is going to be selecting that army. He's going to be allowing the people to get together to fight the hosts of Midian to fight off the things that are going to happen in their lives. Yes, education is great. They need to learn how to read so they can learn the Bible. Yes. But what about life? Needing to have that character training. They need to have that basic understanding of obeying you so they can obey God, so that they can go forward for him. Well, I hope that this little impromptu talk to (laughs) was a blessing. It was very unscripted, so please, I apologize for anything that might have been, you know, not refined and polished and edited, Uh, but I did want to share that. Look to the future success. Look at the little steps that are made every single day that are going to meet the future end. I know you can do this, and I'm thankful for you. Bye. If I could say one thing Every he's the best thing If I had only one word Jesus would be heard If I had but one breath I'd use it to praise him with For he is really all that matters When this life is over We cross death's cold waters We'll see more clearly We'll see that really he's it